Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and you can see if you're eagle-eyed that I'm on my laptop today so I hope that the uh, video quality and especially the audio quality isn't too bad. Do let me know in the comments if there's a problem and I will try and fix it. Um, but what are we doing today? Well we're going to be doing a very very peculiar video. At Mark's request I'm going to be trying this classic Sudoku on screen by Sam Kappelman Lines. Now Sam is a member of the UK Sudoku team. He's one of the world's best solvers. Um, but if you've been following the channel, you will know him as one of the world's absolutely tip-top constructors as well. He is, um, he's, a, he's a genius, Sam is. I mean, it, those of you who enjoy the UK TV show Countdown will be well aware of this if you've been following the most recent series on British television. Uh, he has uh, just destroyed everyone in his path. He has some mental firepower that has to be seen to be believed. And Mark, anyway, what Mark wants me to do today is completely, uh, we've never done this before on Cracking the Cryptic. He wants me to put this into a solver, which I've done. He then wants me to run through and watch the computer solving the puzzle. And then he wants me to then try and solve the puzzle. Now, I'm, I'm not sure why, but I, I suspect it's because the computer is going to have to use a whole load of methods that I don't understand. And Mark is then somehow going to expect me to look at this puzzle and solve it using, um, well, the only, th the only thing the only thing I'm expecting is that this might involve one of these um, multi-sector locked sets ideas, because I know that Sam, and together with Tom Collio, who's also a member of the UK Sudoku team, has been studying these recently. And I know that computers don't understand those techniques very well. So that's what I'm going to be expecting. I've got no clue whether I'll be able to do it or not. Um, but yeah, as I say, this is something a bit different. Now, there are two things I want to mention quickly before, before we get onto it. The first is our Kickstarter book campaign, which has just gone incredibly well so far. Um, thank you so much to those of you who've um, supported it. Um, we've managed to actually surpass all of the stretch goals we originally set. And we've, as a result, we've been able to put more stretch goals up. Um, and there are a couple that might be of interest. The next stretch goal, if we hit it, will mean that Mark and I will put extended biographies into the book. Um, I'm not sure yet whether we might do it that I write Mark's and he writes mine. Um, we, what we won't be doing though is uh, have my friend who emailed me this morning to suggest that maybe he could write my biography for me. Well, let me tell you, if he does write my biography, that is not the biography that will ever appear in print. Um, but yeah, so we're going to do some extended biographies, I hope. And the, But the stretch goal I'm really excited about, because I think it might be possible that we get there, is that we'll put 10 puzzles into the book that you guys vote for. So obviously Mark and I have got a short list of puzzles at the moment that we um, hope to include. Um, but this would be another 10 puzzles um, in addition to those those that Mark and I have selected that you guys exclusively choose um, and we're working on the logistics of how we'll do that in terms of polls and things like that as we speak so that would be absolutely tremendous. Um, the other thing to mention is it's the middle of the month now and usually in the middle of the month we release videos um, showing how to solve our monthly reward puzzles over on Patreon. Now we're still getting entries at the moment for Scott Strosal's Puzzle Hunt which has been so well received um, so if you are working on that still, um, do try and get your entries in ASAP because we are probably going to release our videos as a whole series we've had to do because there are so many puzzles. Um, and we're going to probably release those for those of you who are patrons of the channel in the next two or three days. So look out for those. Um, right. With that, let's get to it. And let's um, let's the first thing is we, we're going to let the computer get cracking today. So here is. Um, Andrew Stewart's solver, which I believe is the most popular um, sort of computer solver. Now I am no expert in terms of how this works. Let me try and let me try and put it on the screen. So what I've got to do is click take step, and then the computer will apparently solve the puzzle for me. So uh, it doesn't seem to be. Oh, right. Okay. So the first thing the computer has done. It's not got any hidden singles, naked pairs, triples, X-wings, Y-wings, swordfishes. No, no, no. It's gone straight for this. Alter What's that? Alternative? Alternate? 
alternating, I don't know, alterna alternating inference chain. It's, it's, it's the first technique the computer thinks you use to solve this puzzle. So it's some bonkers form of bifurcation. I mean, Mark would be all over this. Um, right, well, okay, so you need, a, you need a big long bifurcation to start. Then you need an X cycle. I don't really know what an X cycle is. I thought an X cycle was like a skyscraper pattern. Um, a grouped X cycle. Then you need one of those. Then you need another guess. I mean, this is just bonkers. I mean, there's just no, um, as, as so often with these computer solvers, there's just no, why would anyone look for this? I mean, this is completely, it's something involving ones and eights interacting in a way that's completely mad. Um, and apparently the computer can eliminate some digits using these methods. No human being would solve a puzzle this way. Not even Mark would do it this way, I don't think. Ah, it's found a digit, look, there you go. This square is a nine. It had to use another uh, guess to find it, but the first, so the first digit it gets is row two, column three equals nine. And now, no, the get puzzle still doesn't collapse. Good great. I mean, look at this, this is completely absurd. Uh, all this is serving to do is to make me terrified. There's just no way I don't even understand what this is doing. It's found another form of guess, a unit forcing chain now, whatever that is. And it's managing to eliminate some weird digits. Um, okay, so I mean, we get, oh, a 3D Medusa. This looks like some sort of coloring technique. Um, I don't know what it is. No, I don't know what that is. It's another one of those. More guessing. Oh, it got, it's got, now got another digit. Ah, now it's got more digits. Okay, so what we can say with certainty is that this puzzle is bonkers difficult. I mean, if the other, th I mean, the other th interesting thing actually, from my perspective, in terms of how I approach the solve of it, is that at least I know I don't have to bother thinking about like normal techniques at the start. Look, it's done it now. That's completely absurd. Um, I don't have to bother about normal techniques at all because I'm not going to find anything looking at normal techniques. We know there are no hidden singles. There's no naked singles. There's no pairs. There's no nothing. There's no X-wings, swordfishes. So all the techniques I actually know are completely and utterly hopeless. Um, right. <laughs> With that, let's get cracking. Do have a go yourselves. Uh, I don't know how much joy you'll get with this, but the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual, and then I get to play. So let's try and solve the puzzle. So I am, as I say, what I'm going to do is exclusively look from these multi-sector link sets. I've done one video on these before, which was, um, which actually was uh, something Sam pointed pointed out to me about how to solve Tatooine Sunset. So this is what makes me suspect that Sam has got one of these in this puzzle. And we are going to have to work out how to, how to apply. Well, in that puzzle, in Tatooine Sunset, I remember there was some fairly clear repeating sequences of digits in rows and columns, and it wasn't that difficult to see a pattern here, the pattern I mean, this is, I see the diagonal pattern, obviously, but it's not, you know, it's not saying that there's always digits in these positions in these columns, for example, which was the case in Tatooine Sunset. So that's, that's a bit disconcerting. Now, what have we got going on here? We've got... Right, that's interesting. We have got, if we look at column one, the odd digits in column one are locked into um, rows one, seven, and nine. Now look, look at where all the odd digits are in the columns. That is interesting. Now, someone like Sam is so clever that 
this sort of thing that's interesting so whether you look at the rows or the columns the the odd digits in the odd numbered rows are always in the odd numbered columns and vice versa obviously um, it's just another way of saying the same thing now that feels like a Sam Kappelman lines Easter egg to me but the question is what do we do with it and unfortunately I'm not really well versed enough with multi-sector linked locked sets I probably keep saying linked sets I don't even know the name of it but perhaps some of you out there it will therefore be obvious what you do with this to me unfortunately it's not I mean what this so let's let's just highlight these squares I'm going to highlight the columns I don't know if this is what I meant to do but it's what I'm going to do so what we've got to do is to try and come up with a restriction no ah no 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 I see I see right okay what I've, I've thought of something to look at which is better than I had so yeah okay so if we know these these odd digits are in these positions i.e yeah I think if we look at even digits and ask where the even digits go in these columns that strikes me as being quite a sensible question to ask because I know how many even digits need to appear in columns 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9 it's 20 because there will always be 4 even digits in every column of a Sudoku 2, 4, 6 and 8 so there are 20 even digits but the interesting thing there are, sorry, there are 20 even digits in the purple squares. So far, we've placed zero even digits in the purple squares. There are none. So they are, or they ought to be, quite restricted. So I'm going to go row by row, and we're going to count how many even digits we could place in each row of this Sudoku, because in row one, I can only put two. And in fact, look at this, in row two, I can only put two in the purples because there's already two that aren't in the purples. So I'm just going to label that like that. This is not saying, by the way, that th these two squares have to be even digits. On the contrary, I'm only putting these as orange in order to count the maximum number of purple cells in row two I could make even. And it's only two. In row three, it's only two. In row four, it's only two again. Again, these are not saying the positions. It's only two here in row five. It's three. Ah, it's three in row six. We can't do four because there's already an eight that's not in the purples. It's two in row seven. Three again in row eight because of the six. And two in row nine. So let's... Let's look at this. So now we know 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So this this is absolutely what we were meant to do. It's just it's just genius because the computer could not see what we've been able to deduce here. The, we can say with certainty, we know we know as we need to find 20 even digits in the purples, we now know that we cannot include less than 2 in row 1. Because if we do, we can never get to 20. I ha I was These orange squares are the count of the maximum I can put in the, in the purple squares. So if I don't put 2 in these squares, I can't get there. So I can say at the start of this puzzle, these two cells are even. Unfortunately, I can't say that in row two. I don't know these two are even. All I know is that the evens have to go in the purples. Ah, okay. Well, 
That means, I'm going to turn these back to purple again. If I know in row two the purples have to go in the even, in, in, in sorry, the evens have to go in the purples, this square must be odd. Because um, obviously I've got to put two in, in the purple spaces, I've got to put the other two even numbers. So this has to be an odd number. These have to be even in row three. These have to be even in row four. Oh no, no, row four's, no, that's wrong. Row four, sorry, I was misreading that. Row four, all I'm saying is those two have to be, we're saying that the evens have to be in the purples. So this square has to be odd. Row five, these do have to be even. Row six, I've got to put three evens into the purples. So again, these, let's make those purple again. And that means these two squares must be odd. Oh, this is just unbelievable. And we've got those two have to be even. These two have to be odd. And therefore, let's make those all purple so I don't get confused. And these two have to be even. So we actually, I mean, this is in your life. How many times have you done a classic Sudoku that basically where you can divide the grid into odds and evens. I mean, it's like an odd even Sudoku. And we, you know, I mean, this is, I'm a bit lost for words here because this, this is absolutely amazing. So we now know that the orange squares are all even numbers. The gray squares are all odd numbers. And I really hope that this It, it does. It does work. Where does a seven go in box three? Where does seven go in box three? It can't go in an orange square. Orange is an even number for certain. So this has to be seven. It has to be seven. So the first digit the computer placed was a nine, I think, in row two, column three. And it did that after a sequence of about a million uh, good lifts. Um, I mean, bifurcations. Um, we can just write a seven in here by Sudoku. No, no bother at all. That is the power of this technique. If you know a Sudoku needs this technique, as I basically did here, it's incredibly powerful. Um, now, oh, I really hope this, it does, it does continue. Where does one go in box three? It's got to go there. Just normal Sudoku now is, is our friend. We don't have to do anything clever. One's got to be in one of these squares now. Where does three go in box three? It's got to go here. Again, it's just look, it's just, it's not complicated. Three has to go here. It's not complicated. Three has to go here, which is in a gray, which is a relief. Three has to go there. Three has to go here, but we've done the threes. Ah. Uh. Five, where does five go now? Five's here, here and here. That's got to be a five. So this has got to be a five. Oh, uh, no, I thought that was gonna continue, but I think it, it doesn't continue. I think there's a five in one of those. Oh, no, it does. There's a five in one of these two squares and I can't put a five in an even. So this must be a five which means, and I can't put a five in an even down here, that's a five. So the fives also basically get finished. I, I mean, I am a bit lost, lost for words. This is just a quite, quite stunning achievement from Sam. Because it would have been easy, well not easy, I'm sure it wouldn't be easy, but it, you can well imagine you could design a puzzle that relies on this. But, but to design a puzzle so cleverly that the computer can't do it at all, um, or at least can't do it in any sensible way, and then that this square has to be an eight now, it's got to be even and it can't be two, four or six. So this puzzle is just solving beautifully now off the back of, um, of Sam's technique. It's really stunning. Um, 
Okay, let's try and keep this going. Let's try and not uh, not just stall here. Where does one go in this box? I think it's got to go there in the gray cell. So let's put that in. One must be in one of these two cells now. This is rather cool. Look at the ones interacting in these boxes. Ones are locked into column four and column six in two different boxes. So we've not managed to place a one yet. Oh, actually, sorry, that's wrong. I've just noticed that I put the pencil marks here into those two squares, whereas I could have just written the one in there, which would have been easier. So let's do that instead. Oh, and that's very useful because now where does eight go in row four? This eight rules it out of those two squares. So this square has got to be eight. Eight's got to go here by Sudoku. Eight's got to go in one of those two squares. These two squares have got to include a seven. So the seven can't go down there anymore. So this has got to be seven. This one's got to be six. Six must go up here by Sudoku. I just, I mean, it's just, it's become a simple Sudoku. Um, I know that's famous last words, but it really does feel like it's, um, it's not holding up any resistance off the back of what we've managed to do with this technique. Uh, two, four, and eight into these squares. So let's label those up and then move somewhere else, I think. Um, so what could we do next that would be intelligent? Seven, where does seven go in box four? It can only go there just straight Sudoku again. Seven's got to be in one of these squares. This two, four pair here means six and nine need to appear in row six of the grid. Well, that one can't be a nine, so that's got to be a six. This has got to be a nine. That fixes the six up there by Sudoku. <laughs> so that fixes the six here by Sudoku. Six has got to be in one of those two cells. These two squares are two, four, and nine. Don't know if we know the order yet, but let's put them in. Those two squares have got to be six and eight, I think. And there's a six here. So we actually get the six. We get the eight. We get the six at the bottom. I feel like we've done a lot of the sixes now. We get the eight at the bottom. These two squares have got to be two and four. That's interesting. Look, that gives us a two, four pair in row two. So this square has got to be nine. Get rid of the nine from there. This square's a two, four again. In fact, there's two fours everywhere. Look, that's got to be a nine by Sudoku. So we've got a two, four pair in this row. Um, there are two, four pairs all around this grid. Very, it's very strange. Let's have a look at the bottom row. We need two, four, and seven. Well, that is rather nice because this square can't be four or seven because of the four, seven in the column. So that is, a oh, that's not a W, which is what I tried to input. It's a two, that's a two, that's a four, that's a four now, that's a two. That fixes that as a two, that is a four, that is a two. Oh my goodness, come on, keep going. Um, This two fixes the four here. Two eight pair here, so we get the four and the two in this box. That must be a seven to complete this box. This square here has got to be a four, I think. I need one seven and nine here. That means that's a seven. One nine pair into the gray cells. Well, that's a good sign. They are both odd after all. Um, this two fixes the two and eight in box three. That fixes the eight and the one. That fixes the one and the nine. That fixes the nine here. Now, please be a four. And that is the puzzle, I think. Check. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's mesmerizing. Sam Kaplan lines, take a bow, my friend. Take a bow. One of the most stunning things you will ever see in the world of Sudoku, that is. Um, yeah, loss for words. Lost for words. Let me know how you got on with the puzzle. Let me know if you could solve it. Let me know if you needed bifurcation or whether there's another way of doing this. Um, 
And yeah, I, I'm expecting an email soon from Andrew Stewart. He does write to me sometimes to say he's extending the number of techniques he's included in his solver um, off the back of videos of cracking the cryptic. So maybe maybe we'll get, um, what is it? Multi-sector locked sets um, on the solver soon as well. Thanks for watching. Back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.